However, the difference between the Embedded Agent Builder and Copilot Studio is there's so many different tasks that need to be taken. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not always the most organized person. So I feel like if I had some agents working for me for all these tasks, it would be brilliant. The scenarios that are going to have very high impact in your organization. Welcome back to another season of Demystifying. And this time we're demystifying Copilot Studio. And we're doing it a little bit differently. I've decided to bring in some of our most enthusiastic community members to ask their questions directly to our product team. Today, in the first episode, we have Angeliki Patsiavu, one of our business applications MVPs, senior Dynamics 365 manager, and co-host of the Dynamics 365 community call with me. And in the hot seat, we have Kendra Springer. She's the queen of Copilot Studio questions and principal group product manager for Copilot Studio. Welcome both of you. Angeliki, fire away. Hi, Kendra. Hi, Lydia. So my first question is, how should someone start to create an agent? There's so many different implementation options. What is your take? That's a great question. And one that I get in every single customer meeting that I have. So I think the place to start is really with your users or your scenarios. So thinking about what do you want this agent to do? How do you want this agent to help your end users? Are these end users internal? Are they your employees or are they external? Are they your customers, right? And so really planning out the scenarios and actually having a brainstorming session to document all of the various capabilities and problems you'd like this agent to be able to help with. I then recommend taking all of those scenarios and mapping them on a matrix of impact to your organization versus effort to stand up. What that does is it allows you to focus on the scenarios that are going to have very high impact in your organization, but relatively low effort to create, right? And you can learn the tool and scale your solution as you start to branch out into other areas or other scenarios that you have uh, flushed out as you're looking at what your agent will help your end users do. And when initially setting up your agent, start with those instructions, describe exactly how you want this agent to help support your end users, what types of scenarios you'd like it to help with, and then start by adding your knowledge. You can see exactly uh, how this agent will be able to leverage this knowledge to answer those questions, to support some of those common scenarios, those FAQ scenarios, if you will. And also your agent can leverage these knowledge sources in task completion. And in order to enable that, you then need to start adding tools, things like connectors, flows, MCPs, etc. Again, start small, start at the foundational level with your knowledge, then add tools, and then you can scale up to more advanced capabilities like prompts or uh, model selection through Azure AI Foundry integration, etc. That makes total sense. And thank you for sharing that structured and uh, practical approach, because ultimately pre-planning will definitely be gold when it comes to these things. And I don't think we always invest in pre-planning when it comes to mapping out our use cases and our requirements. So very good tip. Of course. Okay. Second question. How should someone differentiate between a Microsoft 365 agent builder and Copilot Studio for developers? Help us out here. Yeah, of course. So Microsoft 365 agent builder is an incredibly easy way to get started, right? You can give that agent builder a set of instructions or a small prompt for how you'd like this agent to support you. You can then give it a knowledge source. And there are so many different types of knowledge that you can infuse these agents with. And from there, you're really off to the races. You're able to share those agents. You're able to manage those agents inside of the Microsoft Admin Center, right? However, the difference between the Embedded Agent Builder and Copilot Studio is you can think about Copilot Studio as almost a superset of capabilities that the Agent Builder has. So as soon as you need to be able to do anything more advanced, like add advanced automation or maybe add rule-based conversation logic through topics or deploy these agents as standalone agents that are maybe external to Teams or Copilot, that's really your indication that you need to move over to Copilot Studio. That's where you can really 
have that full suite of maker tools available to you to really flush out a truly custom agent solution. Oh, that is brilliant. And I think it's really helpful to even demystify, I know, pun intended, this kind of areas because uh, as we want to people to get started in either or, it's very important that they can really identify with all of these different capabilities and platforms. So, third question, talking about agents, uh, there's some agents that are knowledge agents and thus can answer questions. Some of them are task-based and can automate certain pros for us. And some of them are autonomous. They can operate entirely on their own. But what happens when we want to have all of these aspects into one? Is it better to just bring one big agent to the table or is it better to break it down into multiple agents? What would you advise? Honestly, this answer is not necessarily black or white. It's highly specific to your scenarios, right? And all of that pre-planning that you did from the first question can really help here um, as you start to think about architecturally, how are you going to deploy your agent solution and break it up into uh, more manageable agent components, if you will, right? Um, you can absolutely have agents that only do information retrieval or only do task automation or only uh, run autonomously, right? Or you can have an agent that has capabilities across all three of those areas that answers questions from knowledge, that automates completion of a certain task and that responds on behalf of a team or an organization based on particular events. I think the best thing to think about is breaking up your agent by scenario affinity, if you will, right? So let's take the example of a banking agent. There's lots of different reasons a customer would engage with an agent for their banking needs, right? Maybe you need to manage your funds, move and transfer funds. Maybe you just want to simply check your account balances. Maybe you want to report lost or stolen cards or report fraud. Maybe you want to manage a loan, mortgage, auto, etc. You can see how each of those kind of fits nicely in a different pillar, if you will. And each of those kind of sub areas could be an agent that's infused with its own knowledge and its own tools and capabilities. And then you can connect all of these in a multi-agent uh, solution. That can help you improve accuracy, um, decrease the opportunity to have overlap in use cases or scenarios. Um, and you can set your agent up um, in that type of structure if that makes the most sense. Again, though, it's really just dependent on what's right for you and what's right for your scenarios that you're deploying this agent to support. That That is brilliant. I think we're still focusing on the topic of pre-planning and how important it is. I was having a similar thought when I was thinking of booking a destination to, uh, for a trip somewhere, let's say like Vienna, because there's so many different tasks that need to be taken. And I'm not going to lie, I'm not always the most organized person. So I feel like if I had some agents working for me for all these tasks, it would be brilliant. Thank you so much for all these answers. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. I think too, from like a management perspective, if you think about agents that um, serve an entire organization, right, and might support different departments, this also enables you to have those departments who are the experts in their area, create agents to support the scenarios they need, and then connect them all together to support your organization, right? So there's many needs um, that are supported by multi-agent solutions, uh, but don't feel like you have to break them up to some particular granularity. It's, it's all dependent on your needs. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining me for this first episode of Demystifying Copilot Studio. Angeliki, some great questions, and as expected, Kendra, some awesome answers that have really cleared up a few things for me as well. Now, if you're a fan of Copilot Studio and want to learn more, I have a few places that you can head. First of all, go to aka.ms slash tricopilotstudio to access a free trial. We have a brand new agent creator site at aka.ms slash agent creators with an S on the end. And of course, there's tons of Copilot Studio content coming daily on the Power Platform community channels on LinkedIn, YouTube, and on our community site. I think this is going to be a great series. So we'll see you on the next episode of Demystifying Copilot Studio. Thanks, everybody.